Welcome to the session three for chapter two, programming language syntax for the parser. In the previous session, we finished the LL parsing. Now we will start the LR parser and button up parsing. LR finally parsing. LR finally parsing based on the ship reduce method to be described here is called LR parsing. So basically all of the LR family parsing based on the ship and reduce algorithm. There are a number of variants. Hence the use of the term LR family. It has many different flavor of grammar and the parser, but they all use the same driver. They differ only in the generated table. So basically all of the LR parser are table driven. The L in the LR indicate that the string is parsed from left to right, and R indicate that the reverse of the right derivation is produced. So basically, we try to de derive the production rule from, from right to left. A given grammar, we want to develop a deterministic bottom up method for passing legal strings described by a grammar. As in, as in top down passing, we do this with a table and a driver which operates on the table. So basically, LR passing are given a grammar and we try to pass it in the bottom up way, but it's with a table and the driver. But the table is different from the top down passing. The top down passing, as we described, is based on those predict sets. And here, the LR family is different. We're using a different table. So here, let's compare the LL and LR grammars. LL0 is contained by the LR0 grammar. So all of the LL family are a little bit smaller than LR family. So whatever can be described by LL family grammar will all be described by LR family because LL family grammar has the limitation of the no lab recursion and the no uh, common prefix. So our grammar interface, where well, our grammar space is, content free grammar is so big. And then LR0 is the smallest set. And then we have SLR1, LA, LR1, and LR1. So LR1 is bigger and with some limitation, we can develop a more efficient uh, grammar set for simple left to right, left, simple LR family and LA look ahead LR parser. So LL1 is actually uh, overlap with these different grammars, but is contained by L1, LR1. So the relationship for the grammar family is like this. So the higher order of the look ahead, you have more if impressive power, but it will take more time in derivations. Bottom up parsing, a bottom up parser works by maintaining a forest of partially completed subtree. So basically what is partially completed subtree? We can look at the previous example in the previous uh, chapter. So here, this is a ALR parser, and we basically pass through a par partial tree, and then we assemble them together, uh, part by part. So in order to do that, we need to have a pass step. So for example, we push in some of the item here, and then some of the item here, until they move up, we pop out both sides, and then link them together as a bigger tree. So it rely on a pass step. So we have a pass table, we have a pass there, and we also have an input string in LR passes. Let's go back to LR passing. So basically it's a partially completed subtrees of the pass tree, which it joined together whenever it recognized a symbol on the right hand side of some production used in the rightmost derivation of the input string. So if it is finished, we power out those different subtrees and then combine them together. It create a new internal node and make the roots of 
the join together tree, the children of that node. So basically, we after the children of the node uh, being available, we actually make a dude and then make a new internal node to combine them together. So this is actually on the uh, past step. And the difference between the button up and the top down is uh, this LR use heavily uh, of the, uh, the past step. And the table are different. So LR parser are almost always table driven. Like the table driven LL parser, an LR parser use a big loop in which it repeatedly inspect a two dimension table. So basically it is also a loop. And each time we also have the uh, input, a current state and the input symbol to find out which, what uh, action need to be taken. And then unlike the LR parser, however, LR driver has non trivial state like a DFA. So basically it's on using the DFA. It is not relying on the look ahead, it relying on the past step. And basically we don't want to have the a trivial state. And the table is indexed by current input token and the current state. So basically the table is also operating on current index token and current state. So this part is similar, but the table is different. A state contain a record of what have been uh, so far. So the state contain the partial pass tree. So here is a model of an LR parser. We have the input string, and then we have the uh, table, and the table contain the action and go to, and go to is actually go to the uh, next day. So it actually, this actually con constructed by LR0 master, SLR master, LR1 master, and LA, LR1 master. So this different uh, grammar will end up with different table, but they are all of similar flavor. And A is a past step with the state number and the partial result terminal or non-terminal be pushed to here. So what is partial terminal and partial uh, non-terminal? It's actually that you have certain state that represent your current state. And also you would have symbols. So for example, it can be E and then uh, end up with state one or something. And then they maybe have a T upper and then maybe you would P and E in combine will end up with the E, and then it will complete this as a subtree. So something like that, you actually utilize the step to construct your tree structure. So here is a pre-compiled table. And the, how this uh, pre-compiled table are constructed, we will explain later. But now let's first look at this set of grammar. And if you can, as you can see, this set of grammar, we used that before. And right here, we use, uh, we have a, a pre-compiled table for this. And this part is action. And action is about the push and pop of the stack. So basically, you do reduction for certain rule, or you do shifting for some rule. And reduction and shifting is like if I have A that uh, will go to uh, say E or C or whatever it is, shifting means this. And reduction means actually it's based on a bottom part, maybe E uh, go to T and T or whatever. And this one reduced to here. So you will actually will pop out this uh, subtree and then go back to this E. That's called reduction. And if you move over to the next symbol, actually is so-called the uh, shifting. And as long as the go to next day, the next day will be described by this part. And the action is by this part, whether shift or reduce. So let's look at the part two, uh, this uh, LR passing, the LR passer driver and passing example. So, Parser driver action, the driver read the input and consult the table. The table has four different kinds of entries called action. So action, we have four kinds. We have shifting. Shifting indicate that by S and number. And the entry on the table, the 
number is the new state. So we shift. So we shift. We shift to the next table, and it may be go to a different state by that shifting. So we will push some of it into the stack or this one into the stack. So when we come to this entry table, we shift current input symbol followed by the indicate new state to the stack. So he, this stack is the past stack. And reduce, reduce is actually pop out. You actually indicate by the R number and the number is the number of production rules. So this one's production rule, this one is the state. It's different. And the top of the state contain the right hand side of the uh, state and the handle. And then reduce by the indicated production rule, consult after that, you reduce, so you go to the table C the next day. And then push the left-hand side of the production back to the, uh, so basically, the production duo, you actually, uh, basically, if he has an E to something, and then you finish this one, the right-hand side finish, and then it pop out, and then you push this E into there again. Something like that. And the set is, Described by accept actually is a terminal. So when it come to this entry, we accept a input string. That means that string is completed. Passing is completed for that string. An error will be reported if there is a syntax error. Okay, so the parser algorithm is like this. Basically, we loop around. So initially we set a state to zero, the starting state. For example, you program a top level simple, the state zero. And then you actually apply an end to the input. So you push a, actually a, a pen, a, a dollar sign or double dollar sign to the end of the table. And then if the action is not a set and the while action is not error, you do the following. So you don't have an error and you do not finish the program, you do the following. Your stack is something like this, and you have the remaining input that like is. So each time you examine the current state, and also uh, this, actually this stack has that information. So examine your current state, SM, and then your input symbol, AI, that's in question. With that, you find an entry and decide whether it's uh, action shift or action reduce or accept. And then finish that, you go back, push something to the stack or something, and then you gradually uh, look at a characteristic uh, finite state machine. So you combine the state and the input for the characteristic uh, finite state machine. And that characteristic finite state machine is used to construct our uh, state table. So basically, the table we look at is based on the characteristic uh, finite state machine. And a characteristic finite state machine is somewhat like this one. And we will explain it later. And for the time being, that's assumed that there is certain characteristic uh, finite state machine that we can use. And right here, we are basically using a certain characteristic finite state machine to finish our operation. So it's a, this is a while loop. While you don't have error or while your program has not been done, you actually each time look at your input and your current state and then find a transition table. So that, that table is actually also a transition table. And then you find certain option uh, operation you want to do. So right here, the table itself is similar to the LL table, except that we have action and go to. And our set of the grammar is over here. And this is a set of LR lab recursive grammar because here, here we have this lab recursion. And this is not allowed in LL format.
So now let's get started. So here we have an example. For example, we like to pass A times B D parentheses. So first we push a state zero to the stack, and then actually uh, the input we put a, a dollar sign to the end. So this is initial condition we have state and input. And then we start from here and we will actually uh, look at A. And A is an ID, so we actually operate uh, S. S is the uh, the shift. So basically, we we have the dual one expression. We kind of shift and go to uh, state phi. So we go to state phi. We actually uh, has this uh, and push an ID into there. That is the symbol we have, and then we are in the state phi. And in the state phi, we see a star. Uh, Star symbol. So we go to state five, and with star symbol, we actually find a, a thing called reduce six. So reduce six, six is the not a state six is actually rule six. It will be f uh, actually uh, uh, the factor is an id. So this uh, this actually the a that's push in uh, that one actually is an id. So we determine that. So actually, after that, we reduce that. We actually pop out these two scene. We go to go back to state zero, and then we look at the star. We actually know that it's a factor. So we push in a factor, and uh, here the symbol is three. That's the next day. We find out that the next day is three. So we will look at the three. So when we look at the three, it says that's reduce four. So basically it's a reduced rule. Again, we go to rule four. At the rule four, we say that it's actually a terminal. And then that terminal is a uh, actually reduced by a factor. So this factor go up to be a, uh, actually a a terminal. So basically, we initially have this e and then e plus uh, t something, and this e we go down that has the terminal and terminal has a factor and the factor has the id. So we first apply the state file and reduce dual six and then reduce dual four, and we go back here here. So we see the reduce dual four. So basically, with that, we actually uh, we go to uh, rule four, and we will actually uh, have that rule four. And then rule four, we we pop them out. We will see uh, the zero, and that actually the right right hand side is f, left hand side is t. And so we got t. Uh, this actually go to state two. So we go to state two. And uh, actually, uh, we will see actually is an accept. Uh, so over that accept, uh, actually we determine uh, that's a terminal. I'm sorry. And then with that, actually we continue. Uh, it will go to that part uh, with that. Uh, stage three, and then we continue to look at the uh, that a already be determined, and then we start look at this uh, star, and we go to rule four, and rule four, and let's go back. Rule four is back to here. And then we actually go state two and then rule four. And basically the next one we determine this star key. And then we shift to the state seven. And then we push in the star. So this one is already in there. We try to look at its right hand side. And when we look at it in the right hand side, we go to state seven and we continue to the 
uh, push in four and then four uh, stay four and then ID and then HA dot ID is the first uh, the B and then we actually push and pop and then we determine that's a, a factor and then that's also a term and then that is actually an expression so B finish the expression and then we push in the plus and then push in uh, the another ID and that determine the IC is a factor and also a term and then we actually uh, this whole scene will be pop up so we had an expression and the parenthesis and then we determine that and then actually we will pop that out and determine this whole scene a expression is a factor and f factor uh, will time with a, a term and that factor times term use the dual to that's a factor times ten, uh, turn. Sorry. So eventually we we'll go back and then accept the whole thing. And uh, so the passing finish. Now let's look at calculator language example. So here is a canonical uh, derivation. This is our stack uh, contained and our remaining input is like this. So each time we do the similar things. If our grammar is so simple, we see an A and then we push in the uh, ID and then we have the A and then we have comma and then we have id and b and then comma and then id c and then semicolon after that we actually pop out and then get this one as a id tail list so from id we explain as this and then pop out and this one is an id tail this tail and then go back to finish with this this is a call uh, canonical chart abbreviation. This is similar to the previous example, but have different flavor. So pattern our grammar for the calculator language. In our ID list example, no handle was found until the entire input had been shifted to onto the step. In general, this will not be the case. We can obtain a more realistic example of LR calculator language is shown in figure 2.25. So there is another uh, version and the version in uh, figure 2.25 is more preferable for two reasons. Uh, first, it uses the less recursive uh, production for statement list. And the left recursion out the parser to collapse low statement list as it goes along. Rather than waiting until the entire list on the stack and then collapse it from the end. Second, it uses a rec uh, recursive production for expression and term. This production capture lack associative associativity while still keep on keeping an operator and its oper operands together in the same right hand side. Something we were unable to do in top down grammar. So basically, we 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 use the uh, left recursion uh, production and also capture the lack associativity, and this cannot be done. Uh, by the LL passing. So this kind of uh, grammar is acceptable by the button up grammar, and but not for the uh, uh, top down. So let's look at, let me see, let's look at the grammar. This one's 216. That's, I'm sorry, this one is the figure 2.25. Uh, so this set of grammar actually is updated from here and make it uh, compatible with LR1 grammar, the figure 2.25 grammar that we talk about. And here, as you say, see, we try to break this into this, this into this, make it more faster uh, evaluation for the production rules. So we try to break down each of the option list to this. So that's the figure 25, 
2.35 pattern upbreaker uh, gamma. This one is the 2.25. So it modified from 2.16. So now let's look at how to generate a table, uh, the pre-compiled uh, rule table. So it's a bottom up parts of the sum and the average program. The key to success will be figure out when we will reach the end of the right hand side, that is when we will have a handle at the top of the past step. Once we reach the end of the, the, the uh, right hand side, we will actually pump out uh, the whole thing and then do reduce. The trick to keep track of the set of production, we might be in the middle of at any particular time together with an indication of where in those production we might be. When we begin execution, the past step is empty and we are at the beginning of the production of the product program. So basically each time we push something into the stack and then once that is actually continuing shifting and then here we are at the end of the production rule, we do reduction. And then each time we may push something in there and pop in something down there, and then we will obtain the design for action table and the go to table. So let's look at how to generate the action table and go to table. So that sum average program is our uh, example. So a production duo uh, with a square, black square is called an item. So we started with the duo that is program. Uh, with this, this, and this, this call basis. And the rest of it, try to explain it, it's called closure. So initially we have an item like this, it's called the basis of the list. And then the additional items are called closure. The list represent the initial state of the process. So initially we have this basis. As we shift and reduce, the set of items will change. So basically the cell item will make bigger or smaller by push and pop in and then the closure will be supplying for those information. If we reach a state in which some item has the square at the end of the right-hand side, so we keep shifting, then we will reduce that production. So we, we so for example, this dual zero, one, two, three. So if this one keep moving to the end, and then we will reduce the dual three. And otherwise we will be doing shifting. So otherwise we, we must shift. So these are the basic rules. You continue to pass down the, the, the list and then we do that. Know that we need to shift, but incoming token cannot follow the, uh, the, in, in any item or the current state. The syntax error has occurred. We will, if the syntax error wrote, we cannot follow. We will consider error recovery in more detail in the section C dot, uh, C 2.3.5. So that's a re, uh, report error or backtracking. So, this can also be have the backtracking uh, mechanism. So now that, let's look at how to do shift reduce uh, first. So uh, the, the, the duo that written in the textbook has a shift reduce and shift and reduce uh, three statement. But it, remember uh, our previous example, not simple example we, we have. This one only had the shift and reduce. And will it matter or not? No, it won't matter because shift and reduce actually may happen together at the same time. So this one can be further be break down into shift and the reduce to operation like the previous one. But with the re, uh, shift and reduce uh, operation actually make the compiler faster. So initially we uh, actually uh, look at the input token we haven't read. So our starting point will be our starting point will be here. We have the program and then push in a statement list. So we push in a statement list. After we push in a statement list, we see a read. So we just push in the read. Okay, and then we actually will ship over the read over here and we see an ID. So this one is the ID. So we push in A. After we push in A, we are at the end of the statement. So we will do reduction. And when we do reduction, we pop A out. And then we pop read out, but we will push in. Actually, we have the, 
we have the duo. We have the duo over here. We have the read and ID. That's a statement. And statement is a statement is. So we actually pop, pop, and then we have statement. We can start, can start that as a tree, and then we pop out and push in the statement list. We don't know whether the statement list will be useful or not, but we just push that in. And when we push that in, we finish this subtree. That's for A. So we continue. We continue. Uh, actually, uh, we, we finish uh, over here. It's the end of this. So we basically uh, will explain this. Probably there is a statement. We finish that statement. So we have more statement to be explained. So we continue to do that. We will be able to see where are the ship and reduce a statement need to be done. And eventually we will come out for each grammar. We will set, have such a rule. So this table include the action part and the go to part. So each one, the stay over here, that's a stay. And then there's a transition. So you will say go to two, you will go to stay two. So the transition is the go to part. And the stay with the ship and reduce, we'll see where it is. We decide whether it's a reducer for each stay or for it's a ship for each stay. So this table actually represent the calculator figure 2.20 files a uh, version for this action and go-to table, similar table, but in more complicated way. And this table actually can be further constructed to such a finite state machine. We call this a characteristic of finite state machine for that grammar 2.25 and for the, for the actually uh, table is 2.26, the table, and for grammar, 2.25. And that characteristic machine will have this SLR1 plus table for the calculator language that we talk about in figure 2.25. So it's that this one is actually a very splendid, uh, very interesting table. So it's quite different from what we whatever we see in the uh the LL grammar. So here we have the uh passing based on the ship reduce and ship reduce. Okay, and this one is a driver for SLR1 parser. So LR1 passing number four, other topics. So LR passing variant, you have uh basically when you have your grammar is different, the table will be different. And you have a different way of writing the LR0, LR1, LR, SLR1 parser, LA, LR1 parser. It will be based on the how you write the grammar. And the grammar will be represented by the table. So, so LR0 states are created, no longer here were used to create them. We did, however, consider the next input symbol when creating the table. If no look ahead is used to create a table, then the parser will be called LR0 parser. So, but this is not really very useful. LR1 table, typical programming language are massive. So LR1 table is a typical uh, parser. And SLR1 parser recognize many, but not all. So it has limitation, uh, but uh, it's construct typical programming language, but pretty fast. Uh, this is another type, uh, LALR1 is another type of parser which recognize almost as many constructs as uh, LR1. So this is very close to LR1. And this is called look ahead LR1 parser. And it is constructed by first constructing the LR1 item and state and then merging them together. So basically it's an optimization of the LR1, make it smaller whenever two states are of are the same, except the look ahead tab simple. They will be merged. The first LA stands for look ahead token. So basically, it's optimizing from LR1. You have LR1, and you will optimize to look ahead version. So LR5 parser family, the grammar are quite different. They have different finite automata to be met to. So basically, the characteristic uh, finite state machine are different. 
The simpler member of the LR parser are LR0 and LR1 and the LA, LR1, all use the same automata called the, the characteristic finite state machine. So these three use the same one, but the dual are maybe different. A full LR parser use a machine with most programmer, most grammar, a much larger number of states. So it's actually much larger. The difference between the algorithm lies in how they deal with states that can then should reduce uh, conflict. So button up passing table, like the table driven LL1 parser and SLR1, LA, LR1, and LR1 parser is queued and loop. So basically, it also a loop repeatedly inspect two dimension table, find out what action to take. So basically, go back to our basic uh, action algorithm. Let me see, let me, let me take a look on it. So the parser driver is all based on this algorithm. The table are different, but other than that, the basic algorithm are similar. So instead of using current input token and top of state non-terminal to, to index into the table, LR family parser use the current input token and current parser state. Ship table entry indicate the state that should be pushed. Reduce means where, what should be popped. And the pop pin will actually uh, construct a new node and then combine two subtree together. And then if there is some grammar, grammatical error, it will be detected. Handling is epsilon production. The careful reader may have noticed that the grammar figure 2.25, in addition using the lab recursion, and differ from a grammar figure 2.16 in one way that it defines statement list to be a sequence of one or more statements rather than zero or more. So basically, uh, actually the, to capture the language 2.16, uh, production three in uh, this need to be replaced by this. Know that it does not generally make sense to have empty statement list. In the calculator language, simply permit empty program, which is admittedly silly. In real language, however, it allows the body of structured statement to be empty, and which is very useful. So basically, adding this item is very useful to handle the epsilon production. And finite characteristic and finite state machine with epsilon production can be done by this. If we look at the characteristic of finite state machine, of the calculator language, we discover that S state zero is the only state that need to be changed in order to allow empty statement list. So basically we can have this and then you will become this and which is equivalent to this can have a production rule of this or simply this. So the entire state is then have different file set. So something like that we make some minor change, we will be able to accommodate the Epstein uh, production. So now let's look at the overview for compiler compiler. We have done with the basic LL parser and LR parser. Now we look at the next and yet and yet actually is a LR family parser. So we have a lexical rule using the regular expression feed into lex and lex generate a yy dex uh, function that to be included into your compiler that will take the input to generate the token string and then use the context free grammar rules and the C code you generate uh, a YY parse function and include it in your parser and also your uh, compiler and it will produce a parse input for you. So basically here we have A equals B plus C times D pass through the lexical analyzer, we become ID1 equals ID2 plus ID3 times ID4. And we go into syntax analyzer, we create a syntax tree like this. And then we have code generation to have the assembly like this. So here is the whole purpose of compiler compiler. We call it max and yes. 
and the newer version is uh, Flex and Python. And Flex and Python description, you can look at our uh, 2017 uh, lecture. We have three lectures on this. So calculator language compiler generation, we have the Flex and Python. You will calculate the white for row that's the content free grammar feed into the Python. We generate the calculator that tap that the C, that's a C program, and the dot H file. The dot H file being included into the calculator X, calculator Lex, uh, the regular expression file. And two, with the calculator that tap that H and flex, we actually generate a calculator that Lex dot C, that one is a token analyzer or the lexical analyzer, and then we combine that with the calculator that tap that C, we generate, uh, we using GCC to compile, we create a compiler for calculator language. So basically, Flex is a faster version of Lex, and we use a regular expression to fit into Flex, and then basically the yy Lex dot yy dot C uh, being included, and that actually come with the yylex function and pass through the C compiler, we generate the uh, lexical analyzer. And this lexical analyzer doesn't have to be a C compiler, it can be anything, any from an uh, token and an analysis one uh, function. So Flex is a tool for generating scanner. Flex source is a table of regular, uh, regular expression and the corresponding program fragments. Generating Lex yy C, which define a routine of yy Lex. So basically, you have the dot flex file or dot lex file. You feed into flex and you generate a function, a, a, a C program, and the C program including the yy Lex function, and you pass through a compiler, and then you generate a assembly call, uh, a dot out file, and that dot out file can take your input string and generate the tokens. Parser generator, you basically uh, take in the y, yet the y or any uh, the y file that is actually written in content free grammar, and that one you use a yet or Python. Uh, Python is the advanced version of yet. You generate y dot text tab type dot c, and that one pass through compiler. You generate the execution call, and then you can accept the input and then generate the pass uh, output string. This output string for uh, this, this uh, yet or flex uh, or, or Python, it can be a, uh, a set of C call, or it can be a machine call, or it can even be a, uh, can also generate a uh, tree uh, information. So basically, this is actually quite useful, not only for compiler, but also can use as the basic uh, the syntax analysis for many program as the front end processing. So you have to look into Python to know what it is. So look into some of the uh, file we have in the previous uh, lectures uh, in 2017. Uh, scanner and parser interaction. Parser assume the existence of the function integer yylax. So we assume that for the token analysis. A scanner actually return the value indicate the type of token found, and that's the output for the integer type, and the integer type is the token ID number. And we have yy text, that is the string value for that uh, name, and then yyl value is the, re the variable or result for the uh, left-hand side uh, value. So yy, what yet determine the integer represent Patient for tokens communicate that with the y dot tap dot h. So you use a yet dot dash d or Python dash d that will generate this y dot tap dot h, and this one to be included into the uh, the, the yet file. Um, I'm sorry, the next file dot l or dot lex file uh, in your parser uh, in your uh, scanner. I'm sorry, scanner generator uh, for uh, flex or less. Okay, something like that. But you need to do that detail. So basically, you use the content free grammar, and then dash D, you generate a tab, uh, .h file included into here, and then you generate a yy less function, and then combine this to generate a pass input. So that pass input function is yy pass. 
So basically like that, but you have to duplicate into the program. And why why that's input card format? You have the double da, double percentage sign to uh, divide the file that uh, Y file into three sections, definition, dual, and user code. User code is like a C function. Dual is the your content free grammar uh, definition. And definition is to use define the basic uh, definition for the whole program. So that's the divider. And these three are actually uh, optional. So short is the possible uh, YY or well, yet input is two percentage sign. So here is one Python grammar rule. You have input and input uh, defined as input line, and the line defined by this expression defined by this. So here, this one is a content free grammar, and the option line is like here. You accept expression with three options, and the right hand side with a, a curly braces pair. This is the call that's going to be generated. So in here, we actually generate C code. So it's like a input format, we generate a C code. So it's the C code generator in this case, using the Python grammar rule. So a set of rule grammar in uh, content-free grammar, we can write in the yet rule like this. And the right hand side have the C code that's put into the curly brace for you to generate a C code. And here you can have assembly code if you know how to write it. You can have a different code to run it if you know how to write it. So our GNU C, GCC in window, uh, you can use that to try out uh, the programs. So we actually end up to here and then if you are interested in the uh, Flex and Python, please do look at the video that we generated last year. And this year, we are not going to teach that again. And I try to find time to help uh, to create more video on the file generation, tokenization, and uh, uh, syntax, uh, the SDD, the syntax diagram file, and also regular expression. Thank you. Bye now.